Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss a new discovery coming from our neighbor, the Large Magellanic Cloud. But to be more specific, coming from a very famous region inside of this galaxy, the region that you see right here, R136, an extremely massive starburst region that contains the highest population of young massive stars near us, with many of these stars breaking a lot of records with the most famous star, R136A1, essentially holding the record for being the most massive star ever seen, with a mass over 300 solar masses. The star that's visible right here. And because in this case, this whole star cluster is also one of the most easily visible and one of the brightest and most active, it allowed the scientists behind the recent paper to discover something super important about these clusters, in the process helping us understand how galaxies evolve and how runaway stars might play an extremely important role in the evolution of galaxies. But in this case, the discovery was very unexpected and somewhat unusual. And so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail. But first, let me briefly mention why this particular star cluster is actually so important for a lot of modern studies. So first of all, what you're actually seeing in this image is one of the most iconic shapes you can find if you have any kind of a telescope. This is known as the Tarantula Nebula although I guess more officially known as Theory Doradus. And this entire nebula, even though it's about 160,000 light years away from us, is extremely bright and is easily visible from planet Earth. But the way this nebula is created is through the illumination from all of the stars inside R136. In other words, it's those stars inside the cluster that produce powerful enough emissions to then illuminate the nebula, making it appear visible from very far away. And here it's actually because there's an enormous amount of really young, really bright stars, which technically makes this the nearest starburst region. And in one of the recent videos, we actually discussed how this might have been the face of the early universe. In other words, most galaxies back in the days potentially resembled what we see inside R136. And so in some sense, this is essentially a perfect way to study how early galaxies evolved and how early stars influenced galactic formation. And so because of the extreme concentration of very massive stars in a small region, and specifically there are at least 72 class O and Wolfraya stars within about 15 light years away from one another, and the total mass of this cluster being about 450,000 solar masses makes this an extremely important region of space when it comes to astronomy and when it comes to understanding how the universe evolved and how various stars seem to form in the beginning. And that's because this is also a relatively young cluster, only about 1.8 million years old, with the majority of stars not even going supernova yet, and basically forming a region approximately 200 times more dense than a typical star cluster. But based on various simulations and previous studies, scientists believe that eventually this is just going to become either a typical cluster or possibly even a globular cluster if we wait long enough. Either way though, the point I'm trying to make is that this region is super important. Here's actually one of the more recent images showing us how extremely dense this region is and how many stars are present in a relatively small amount of space. But because many stars here are also easily visible, approximately 15 years ago, researchers using Hubble discovered a telltale sign of what's known as a runaway star. Or basically a typical star escaping a cluster because of various gravitational interactions with its neighbors. And naturally this is kind of expected and has been seen before in other clusters. But here this was really exciting because these were baby stars and because eventually we believe these stars are going to propagate through the whole galaxy, possibly even going supernova in faraway regions. But up until the recent study, nobody had any idea how extremely common this phenomenon is and more importantly, how influential it potentially is when it comes to transforming galaxies. And so let's discuss this new study by Mitchell Stoop and his team that discovers that runaway stars are actually super common and in this case represent at least one third of all of the stars, with this illustration kind of showing us what's most likely happening. And so basically, even though we expect some stars to escape once in a while, for example because of near collisions or because of complex triple and quadruple star interactions, absolutely nobody expected there will be this many stars. And so here by using the Gaia telescope, they uncovered 55 runaway stars, all moving away from the center and all escaping because of various interactions. And because here this is basically a third of all of the stars, by itself this was super unexpected. In essence here the discovery is that 
a huge number of very powerful, very energetic and very massive stars formed inside this cluster will probably travel for thousands of light years, eventually going supernova somewhere far away, affecting stars and gas in relatively far away regions and potentially having a lot of impact on various structures much much farther away than the actual cluster. And though it may seem somewhat unimportant, it actually is important based on a lot of recent discoveries. For example, here is a map we discussed previously of what's known as the local bubble. This is a huge region of space, thousands of light years across, formed by various supernova near the sun. And inside this bubble we also have a bunch of clouds and even a bunch of really powerful stars forming their own regions, all of which potentially have a lot of effect on the entire solar system. As a matter of fact, as we've discussed in one of the previous videos, today scientists believe that a few million years ago, when the sun passed through one of these clouds, it might have actually affected planet Earth, even changing the climate on the surface. And so many of these gas clouds and many of these formations could have also been delivered through very similar processes to what we actually observe right here. And since many of these stars produce a tremendous amount of ultraviolet light that ionizes all of the hydrogen near them, as they travel through various regions in various galaxies, and in this case in the large Magellanic Cloud, they're essentially going to be transforming everything around themselves, eventually exploding and leaving behind a huge cloud of gas. And so here the sheer number of these runaway stars implies that these starburst regions and the runaway stars in them very likely play a much bigger role in the evolution of a typical galaxy. And in this case this was a perfect region to study this, because it's so young and because the stars have not gone supernova yet, here they haven't even traveled that far yet, with all of them still visible. And because of super precise observations with the Gaia telescope, scientists have finally been able to determine their exact motion. And so here 20-30% to of all luminous stars are basically runaways. And the additional discovery here was in regards to when this happened. This is not a continuous event and it actually seems to have happened in at least two separate waves. The first episode was about 1.8 million years ago, when the cluster just formed, with various stars ejected during the formation of the cluster as they interacted with one another. But the second episode was only 200,000 years ago and potentially happened because of the interaction with another nearby cluster. It was actually only discovered in 2012 and so the gravitational influence from the neighboring cluster ejected even more stars. In this case it was actually unusual because during that second ejection most stars were moving in the same direction, which basically meant that there was something really massive nearby and only a nearby cluster could explain the motion. And lastly, this discovery also explains something that might have happened billions of years ago. During the so-called reionization period, when the universe changed from being opaque to more transparent, it's actually quite possible that a lot of these starburst regions and various stars escaping these regions potentially played a huge role in helping the universe to reionize much quicker. Now previously, as we've discussed in one of the videos in the description, astronomers believe that reionization possibly happened because of dwarf galaxies, but in a lot of simulations it was actually the star clusters that played a much bigger role. But here one thing that was not easily explainable is why did it happen so fast? And so by combining these observations with runaway stars, everything kind of starts to make sense. If most of the stars in these clusters escaped as well, they would have been able to reionize the whole universe much much quicker. With all the radiation coming from these stars, changing the entire composition in every galaxy, while also reshaping the gas in a lot of different early galactic formations, enriching the gas with various elements, and laying foundation for new stars that would eventually become something similar to the Sun and planet Earth. So I guess essentially they served as a kind of a delivery and manufacturing system that eventually produced galaxies similar to the Milky Way. And so one of the main points from the study is basically that runaway stars might be much more important than we ever thought. And so some of the future studies might need to explore this idea a little bit better, especially when it comes to galactic evolution and the transformation of the universe. But until future studies or until something else is discovered about this particular star cluster, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out previous videos on similar topics including R136 in some of the links in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.